Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. Um, this is going to be uh, hopefully a shorter video. It's just a short word the Lord gave me a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> but I, um, I wasn't, I told him I wasn't going to give it because I didn't, it, it wasn't something I, I understood and I do, still don't understand it. Um, but I, I think it's a word for somebody or some group or something. I don't understand this word. I wasn't going to give it. <laughs> I told the Lord, it's, I don't see it in the scriptures. I don't understand. And so I told him I wasn't going to do it. But it's been bothering me for two weeks now. So I'm going to give this word, whether I understand it or not. Now, uh, I am going to read some scriptures um, that I hope will cor correspond. These are at least the scriptures that have been coming to my mind. So uh, let me just read those first, and then I'll give you the word. It's not very long. Let me see. First one I'm going to read is, I should have these all queued up, but I don't. Isaiah 53, 4 through 6. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our, iniqui our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Okay. Uh, all we like sheep have gone astray. Actually, I want to read further. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Okay. Now, the next one I want to read is Second Kings. There's quite a few scriptures I do want to read. So, um... 2 Kings 18, starting at verse 17 through 25. And the king of Assyria sent Tartan and Rabsaris and Rabshakeh from Lachish to King Hezekiah with great host against Jerusalem. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. And when they were come up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is in the highway of the fuller's field. And when they had called to the king, there came out of them Eliakim, Eliakim and his son Hilkiah, who was over the household, and Shebna the, the scribe, and Jonah the, Jonah the son of Asaph the recorder. And Rabshakeh said unto them, Speak ye now to Hezekiah. Thus saith the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this wherein thou trustest. Thou sayest, but they are vain words. I have counsel and strength for the war. Now on whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me? But now behold, thou trustest upon the staff of this bruised reed, even upon Egypt, on which a man leans. It will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt unto all that trust on him. But if you say unto me, We trust in the Lord our God, is not he, that he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah hath taken away, and hath said to Judah and Jerusalem, Ye shall worship before the, this altar in Jerusalem? Now therefore I pray thee, give pledges to my lord the king of Assyria, and I will deliver thee two thousand horses, if thou be able on thy part to set riders upon them. How then wilt thou turn away the face of one captain, of the least of my master's servant, and put thy trust on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen. Am I now come up without the Lord against this place to destroy it? The Lord said unto me, Go up against this land and destroy it. Okay, now the next thing I want to read is Matthew chapter 12, starting at verse 14. Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him, how they might destroy him, speaking of Jesus. But then Jesus knew it, and he withdrew himself from thence, and great crowds followed him, and he healed them all, and charged them that they should not make it known, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall shew, great, shew judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive nor cry, nor sh nor, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory, and in his name shall the Gentiles trust. And the last one I'm going to read is Luke, 
chapter 4, starting at verse 15. No, verse 16. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and his as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, upon, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovery to the sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord." Oh, and he began he began to say unto them, This day the scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Okay. So this is a, a, just a little word. Um, like I said, I don't understand it. But I'm going to put it out there anyway. Uh, this happened oh, about almost two weeks ago. Um, I was sleeping. And a very nice sound sleep for a change. And... Uh, I felt what was like almost a mild little shock, like someone had sent electrical current up my back just to wake me up, just enough to wake me up. Um, and as I became aware of this little current in my back, as though someone had touched me, and I'm sure someone had, <laughs> I heard this very clearly in my head. Tell my people they must put on the black and blue, or my, they must put on black and blue. Now, I don't know what that means. That's all it was. I asked the Lord for confirmation. I asked the Lord for what it meant. He didn't tell me. So the only thing that came to my mind was something about bruising. Black and blue is bruised. Uh, the colors for bruises. Uh, he was bruised for our iniquity. He was bruised for our transgressions. Uh, so <laughs> this is what came to me. And these are the verses that came to my mind. So I... I like I said, I told the Lord I wasn't going to put it out there because I don't know what it means. And But I guess he wants me to put it out there because even if I don't understand it, I don't think it's an, a literal word for us to put on black and blue. He just said, tell my people they must put on black and blue. And now it could mean that because he was bruised, bruised for our, our iniquity, for our transgression, we put on Christ, so therefore we're putting on his wounds as well as his resurrection. We put on his death, burial, and resurrection. It could mean that. I don't know. Uh, I Like I said, I don't believe it's literal. We're not all supposed to put on black and blue. <laughs> I, I don't know. It could be for Israel. It could be for the Jews. It could be for a special group out there. That's the word he gave me. That's the word I'm giving. So uh, anyway, that... That's it. Okay, so God bless you, and uh, for whoever it's worth, whoever it's for, God bless you too.